guitar. That's fun. So 58. Yeah. So first year, right, uh, for the 335. And uh, it's kind of, uh, it's got a big neck, bigger neck than mine, uh, obviously. Um, you never know because they're all different. I hate it when people generalize that, oh, that's a such and such neck and that's a such and such neck. And it's like, no, man, they're all, they're all snowflakes, really. I mean, there's some commonalities, right? But, um, and this has got a really good break angle because um, we all, on vintage guitars, you know, the neck angle makes a big difference, especially on Gibsons. Um, and this has got a good, good neck angle. Long guard, obviously. And uh, yeah, man. You know, I never really was particularly attracted to 335s in particular, but I found when I found mine, that's just what I ended up playing. It was the first great guitar I got, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, but now it's like the only thing that feels comfortable, really, you know, when I'm playing. I've got some really nice guitars, you know, but I just always end up playing the one, you know. Yeah. It's funny because, you know, all the, 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 the blues guys played ES, um, ES5 Switchmasters, you know, early on. Some of them played Super 400s and L5s and stuff like that, but um, uh, so many adapted to the ES, the electric Spanish, you know, body style. BB King and Freddie King and everybody else, you know, and, uh, and it's that. Of course, the Dumble doesn't hurt either. First thing I ever learned, it's funny because I'm working on a, um, there's a new Elvis movie that's being put together and I'm working on the soundtrack uh, and the score of it to a certain extent. And um, it's been really great because it's all the first stuff I ever learned. And the first thing I ever learned was Heartbreak Hotel. And, uh, and I always tell people, And it's that little thing that everybody always plays wrong. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because um, learning to play guitar by listening rather than watching, um, it's the li that li those little nuances that get lost sometimes because you don't, because when something doesn't sound exactly right and you're like you close your eyes, like it, 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 um, it's always gonna be more prevalent audibly than visually, you know, because if your hands are sort of in the right place, your, your brain can trick you into thinking that you're hearing something that you're not. And, um, and so that's a really good example of, uh, you know, that last lick makes it where he's rubbing an E flat against an E. Which is, you know, because he was playing, you know, flat wound probably 13s on his, uh, on his ES-295, you know, and he couldn't bend a full step you know but it's that weird rub that was so funky to me that's the first thing i ever learned yeah. and so that kind of attention to when things uh have a little nuance in them which you know normally uh like finger vibrato is something that i've seen kind of go by the wayside you know sort of in the modern era you know people can do lots of stuff but you know to just hit something and hold it and have authority under their finger, you know, where it's not wavering, just in a simple muscle memory or, you know. Uh Very simple stuff, you know, that like, if you don't take the, you know, it takes, it, it's not an immediate thing. It takes a minute to, to get it. It's, that's something that is starting to, in the age that we live in, is starting to change, you know, because before, 
you know, everybody learned music the same way, which is you, you, you learned off of records, you know, or you had somebody, you had a friend or somebody who showed you or maybe a teacher, but it was, it was always the audio, the, the audible experience where now um, things can be learned in a much more rapid pace yeah. through the use of visual age, which can get you to a certain place quicker, but in, in a way it kind of homogenizes the experience. <laughs> together a long time me and this guitar um, when I got it it didn't have a scratch on it and um, as you can see it's picked up a few and uh, you know this thing's been I mean pretty much I don't think uh, with the exception of earlier this year uh, when there was some heavy-duty work that needed to be done to it like a new fret job and stuff like that I hadn't ever done a gig without it um, and I ended up doing like eight or nine shows without it. And I was, it was, it was, it was weird, you know? It was like going on dates without my wife, you know? So, um, but uh, it's 62, 335. Um, it, had a, it had a Bigsby uh, and a custom made plaque. Took the Bigsby off, or actually the gentleman I got it from. And this was actually my first introduction to vintage instruments um, in, in earnest. Um, uh, a collector in Nashville had this, and I never really was drawn to ESs necessarily. I just when I when he pulled this out for me to play, I just felt very connected to it, and I was like, "This is great," and I really like this is, and uh, yeah, and and uh, and so the funny story is he wouldn't he wouldn't sell it to me. He let me borrow it a bunch, which of course is the worst thing you can do. You know, because when you let somebody borrow something, then the hooks really get in. And then you can't ever get rid of something. Then it's like, oh man, what do you want? You want my kid, you want my girl, you want my car, what do you want? And so he said he wouldn't sell it. He would trade it for a similar era, 335, but it had to be a, a mono veritone, which is super rare. B.B. Uh, King had one, that's what he used. He had a tobacco one that he used on Live at the Regal. Um, that there's only a handful of photos of him using. It had a Bigsby also in mono with a baritone. Um, and uh, two weeks later, um, Crawford White up in Nashville called me and he had, he had one, a 62 mono 335 with a baritone. And so uh, I bought that guitar and traded it for this. And what's funny is that guitar now, the mono 335 has switched hands multiple times and is the hand is actually owned by a, a a a friend fan of mine in New York City so I know where that guitar is and there is going to be a time where I'm going to have to have that with the cuz that's a great guitar as well but it's like they're kind of yeah. always together that's the thing about this you know it's like guitars sometimes they travel in pairs right you know so uh I've had it ever since and then what happened um at some point in there, I had Joe Glazier in Nashville put this switch in here to make these go out of phase because I love the out of phase sound, and uh, it, which was kind of an intensive surgery because he had to take this pickup apart and put another terminal in it. But because he knows that I'm never, you know, this is, you know, yeah, yeah. this will go with me. You know, he did it, and so that's the only mod I've done to it. So you know, normal. And then when they're out of phase, so it's that, you know, it's kind of an acquired taste, but like Freddie King yeah. 
and Albert King and BB especially played a lot of um, uh, out of phase guitars, yeah. and those sounds are kind of really indelibly etched in my head. And of course, we I mentioned ES5s earlier, which I have my uh, 52 here, um, um, and I'm sure that there's multiple. I see a Switchmaster over here. There's, yeah, there, yeah, there's one down there. Uh, ES5s are normally at least one pickup is wired out of phase with, for the T-Bone Walker. <laughs> That kind of style, low Folsom. So that sound is a big thing in my head. So wow, these all got the fucking shit, don't they? They really do. I love it because the, this is the only V I've ever played. I mean, it's one of the, one of only a, a couple anyway. But uh, all the other ones don't have uh, frets. All of the rest of them have small frets, and it's like they sound amazing. But it's like ah, you know, and it's like this has got. Yeah, man. Thing or get this thing away from me. <laughs> Thanks for watching the vault sessions. Every view and subscription we get it helps us buy guitars for kids. Click here to subscribe. Click here to watch more vault sessions. And visit the website here. Perfect. To learn more about the Cars for Kids program. I love it. I love it. For every $100, you can buy a kid a guitar and 10 weeks of lessons. You're hired. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Nailed it. You got it. Yeah.